Train travel in 1930s America was full of surprises, streamlining, and innovations. Notably, the diesel-electric locomotive was starting to do its rounds on a select few American railroads. Union Pacific's M10,000 Streamliner and the Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy's Pioneer Zephyr were some examples, both built in 1934. However, both were custom-built, semi-permanently connected train sets, with one having a bulbous nose, whereas the other had a shovel nose. Being built as train sets, this meant that the train's power car and coaches couldn't easily be swapped out. Plus, if anything on the set had an issue, the whole train had to go into the shop, effectively putting it out of commission. Diesel locomotives were also still rather experimental and not fully proven, most being relegated to yard or industrial switching. Despite this, the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad had plans for the first streamlined individual diesel locomotive in the world. In 1935, after testing Electromotive Corporation, or EMC's, 1800 horsepower BB box cab on the Royal Blue passenger train, the B&O wanted a more aesthetically pleasing version of the unit. It was noted for being the first standalone passenger diesel locomotive, not semi-permanently connected to a consist of coaches. This meant that the locomotive could be coupled with any compatible rail car and didn't have to drag around a rake of passenger cars if it needed servicing. Only the locomotive would be out of commission instead of an entire train. The result of the B&O's efforts would be the EA locomotive, built by EMC. The EA was built to appear as a luxurious, modern and fast looking locomotive. It was painted deep blue, gray, with a black stripe and yellow outline. The railroad's logo was a steel plate on the nose, with stainless steel wings adorning the single beam headlight. The slanted nose shape was new for the time, stacking the cab on top of the shovel nose design. The E in EA stood for 1800 horsepower, with the A designating the type of unit, being one with a cab. They could speed along at 70 to 100 miles per hour, being powered by twin Winton 201A engines, producing 900 horsepower each. The booster, or B units, also produced 1800 horsepower, with an AB set producing a total of 3600 horsepower. They came in at a weight of 300,000 pounds. They had a length of 69 feet, a width of 10 feet, and a height of 15 feet. The locomotives came equipped with a Wabco horn, something fairly common with early American diesel locomotives. <laughs> The B&O ordered 6 A units and 6 B units. They were built from May 1937 into June 1938, both A and B units being numbered 51 to 56. EAs were soon put to work calling passenger trains like the Royal Blue, Capital Limited, and National Limited. Proving the viability of early diesel power would be one such accomplishment of the units. The B&O and EMC also recognized the importance of aesthetics in diesel power, rather than the locomotives being box cabs or locomotives that didn't have much of an aesthetically pleasing appearance. The EAs also marked a turning point in diesel power construction. Instead of custom-built train sets, mass-produced individual units using the same construction would become more popular. The only difference then would usually be paint schemes, horns, headlight placement, or a few other technical modifications to suit the railroad's individual needs. B&O's EAs would inspire an entirely new line of diesel locomotives, known as the E-Unit, starting with the Santa Fe's E-1 in 1937 and 38. There would also be the E-2 for Union Pacific, Chicago and Northwestern, and Southern Pacific, also in 1937. B&O would continue operating the EAs in regular service throughout the 1940s and 50s. Some would be rebuilt into more modern versions of E-Units into the 1960s. Meanwhile, EA number 51 was traded into EMC, now known as Electromotive Division, or EMD, in 1953. It was stripped of some internal parts and then sent to the newly formed Baltimore and Ohio Railroad Transportation Museum. In that time, the E3 became the first mass-produced E-Unit in 1938, and the E4 through E9 were being built for numerous American railroads up until January 1964. EMD's E-Series of diesels would be rostered in the United States in Revenue Service until 1992 with Burlington Northern and Metra's Commuter Service E9s. These later lived on until 1995 with the Maryland Area Regional Commuter Service. Any other E-units have been preserved or scrapped in various locations across the United States and Canada. Going back to B&O EA No. 51, the first one ever built, it would be cosmetically restored to its as-built condition at the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad Museum and was unveiled during January 2021. 
it remains the sole surviving EA locomotive. Number 51 serves as a role model for 1930s American diesel locomotive design, is an icon of the Art Deco era, and it paved the way for a locomotive mass production model still used to this day. 